welcome back to the channel so in this video we are going to discuss dsp subject and this is the first unit from the subject and these are the topics which i am going to cover in this video so let's directly start the video and do not waste the time so first we will discuss what are the classification of discrete time signals and these are the signals so I will write directly what are the classifications. The first classification is the energy and power. The next one is even and odd signals. And next is periodic and a periodic signal. And the last one is causal and non-causal signals. So what is energy and power signal? See. A signal which is said to be energy signal if and only if the signal energy is finite and the power is zero that means the energy is equals to finite and the power is equals to zero then the signal is said to be energy signal and it is a power signal only if it is having a finite power this power is finite and it is having energy is equals to infinity so a signal is said to be power signal if and only if the power is equal to finite and the energy is equal to infinity. So let me write what are the equations. So equation for energy signal is summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity and then this is the signal and for power we write limit n tends to infinity 1 by 2n plus 1 and then summation from minus n to n and again the signal magnitude square and this energy signals generally these are non-periodic signals and the power signals generally these are periodic signals so these are non-periodic signals and these are periodic signals i'm just giving the you the overview i'm not writing the sentences you can form a sentence and you can write it in the exam so let's discuss what are the even and odd signals. So whenever a signal is satisfying the, uh, the condition x of minus n is equals to x of n. That means the inner number, if we take the negative number, it should give the original signal. That means there is no change of sign in the original signal if we change the, uh, I mean, if we do the negative of the inner values. So that signal is said to be even. And if a signal gives negative in the last then these are odd signals for example uh, for even signal for example we can say the cos cos theta is uh, even signal and odd signal you may say sign sign signal is an odd signal let's discuss what are the periodic and aperiodic signals so periodic signal uh, a signal is said to be periodic if and only if the pattern repeats after uh, some interval of time like let's say sign signal is there so it repeats after let's say pi by 2 it repeats it, it repeats after pi it repeats after pi interval of time let's like it's going up and it's going down and again after pi it's starting and again it's going up and again it's coming down and you may say also the square signal it went from plus 1 to minus 1 again from plus 1 to minus 1 so after uh, time interval of t it is getting repeated right so these signals are called periodic signal so the condition is written as x of n plus n is equals to x of n if the signal satisfies this condition then it is periodic and if it doesn't satisfy this condition then it is a periodic so now let's discuss what are causal and non-causal signals so uh, let's say a signal is there x of n if this signal depends on the present input and again uh, let's say there is another input to it and that only that also is dependent on the present input then the signal is said to be causal or if it is dependent on present and also the past inputs then also it is a causal signal and if the signal is dependent on past and future then it is a non-causal and even if it is dependent on present and future then it is a non-causal signal. So what is the criteria? The signal should be dependent on the present or the past values and it should not be dependent on the future values. So that's the condition for causal and non-causal signals. 
so i guess you are not clear about causal and non causal si signals so let me explain you first let's say this is a signal and it is dependent on the past input and also the present input then this signal is said to be causal and if there is another signal this signal is dependent on the present uh, sorry this is the present and also the future input then this signal is said to be non causal signal so what does it mean even if the signal is dependent on present or past values but it is also dependent on the future value then the signal is said to be non causal and if the signal is dependent on the present or past value then the signal is said to be causal signal now let's discuss how we can convert the continuous uh, signal into discrete signal so i will uh, discuss some problems based on the classification of uh, these discrete signals but in the next video so now just let's let's complete what are the theory parts are there so let's continue with this conversion of the continuous time into discrete time signal so let's say we are taking a sign signal a normal sign signal and it is x of t so the timeline is t right now if we replace t by n of t s then this signal will get converted like this basically it will get sampled so the signal will get converted in like this so this is the discrete time signal and this will be represented as x of n in the square brackets or we can also write so it is represented in the square brackets or you can also write it normal brackets like x of n so this is the conversion of the continuous time signal into discrete time signal now let's discuss this topic which is the classification of discrete time systems so now let's discuss what are the classification of discrete time systems so let me write the classifications one by one first it is static or dynamic and then second one is linear or non linear the third one is again causal non causal and next is time variant and time invariant the next one is stable and unstable systems invertible and non invertible and the last one is ir and fir so let's discuss it one by one so what is a static or a dynamic system so a static system is a system it is said to be a static or memoryless if and only if this the present output only depends on the present input otherwise it is a dynamic system so it depends only on present input otherwise it is a dynamic system you got it for example why of n is equals to e to the power of x of n so this type of system is static and if i take y of n is equals to x square of n plus x of n minus 2 that means it is depending on the present input also and the past input also so this kind of system are called dynamic systems let's discuss the second classification that is linear and non linear so a system is said to be linear if and only if it satisfies the homogeneous and superposition principle it satisfy the homogeneous and superposition principle and what it is let me explain you if i take x1 of n as an input with a1 and x2 of n as an input to the same system and it gives it is given to a system and after that it will give me an output that is y of n then this y of n will be equal to a1 x1 of t sorry n plus a2 x2 of n and in the same manner we gave input x1 and x2 but we passed it with the system first and then we gave it to the adder so it gave us this output
so if this and this output both are same then only the system is said to be linear otherwise if it does not satisfy the condition that if these two are not equal then it is a non-linear system i guess you might have understood linear and non-linear let's go to causal and non-causal in the same manner as we discussed in classification of discrete time signals the signal was if the signal was dependent on the present and the past input then the signal was uh, causal and even if it is dependent on present and past and also it is dependent on the future then that system is said to be non-causal in the same manner here also if a system is dependent on present and past inputs then these this system is called causal and if it is also dependent on the future inputs then this system is said to be non-causal system now let's discuss the next one that is uh, time variant and time invariant so here it should satisfy the condition y of n comma k is equals to y of n minus k so how it came first of all this is the response due to delay input by k samples this is the response due to delayed input by k samples and what is this this is delayed response by k samples so let me tell you how it came if i take y of n comma k then it should give me x of n minus k this is the response due to delayed input and if i give y of n minus k then it should give me y of n and here n is equals to n minus k so this is to delay the output by k samples so if the system satisfies this condition then the system is said to be time invariant that means the system response of the system is not changing with the shift in time in origin so this system is said to be time invariant and if, and if this condition is not satisfied then this kind of system is said to be time invariant that means with respect to change in the time in origin if the time is shifted then the output or the response of the system also changes so now let's discuss the next classification that is stable or unstable systems and uh, this is very important classification because this may be asked in exams also so let's see uh, what are the conditions to be satisfied for a system to be stable so if the system satisfies bebo condition that is bounded input and bounded output and also it is necessary to condition uh, to satisfy the condition that is this magnitude should be less than infinity so a system is said to be stable if and only if for every bounded input there is a bounded output otherwise the system is said to be unstable that means if the bebo criteria is satisfied and also the magnitude is less than infinity then the system is said to be stable or otherwise the system is said to be unstable now the next classification that is invertible and non-invertible so a signal is said to be invertible if there exists an inverse transform then the system is invertible otherwise if there is no possible inverse transformation of the system then those kind of systems are called non-invertible that means if inverse transform exist exist then that system is invertible otherwise those systems are non-invertible now let's discuss the last one that is fir and uh, iir fir means not the first information report which you file in the police station but, but fir means the finite impulse response so what is finite impulse response so the impulse response that is h of n it may be finite or it may be infinite so if the impulse response is finite so let's say 5 for n equal to 0 and 1 and minus 5 for n equal to 2 and 3 and 7 for n equal to 4 and uh, so on for such some values there are finite impulse responses then these kind of uh, systems are called finite impulse response systems and uh, if the impulse response is in of infinite duration um, let's say u of n or r of n then which have uh, uh, infinite duration of uh, the signal the signal goes until infinite duration right so the impulse response must also be of infinite duration so so this kind of systems are called impulse uh, sorry infinite impulse response systems